All right, guys, today we're going to go through how to add remote ID to your existing drone registration. All right, so here we're getting started on the part 107 dashboard. We're actually going to go and start with recreational flyers first. I'm going to manage our device inventory. And you can see here that I've got two examples in here. Part 107 is what we fly all of our missions under. So this dashboard for us is entirely as an example. We don't actually register anything as rec, but to explain how to do this to you guys, we created our own rec dashboard and put a couple aircraft in here. So you'll see one of these guys has built-in remote ID. The other one is not going to. We're gonna get started with a flight test, which is already registered. It's a, a fixed wing, like a foam um, airplane style made by flight test that you build yourself. So if we needed to equip it with remote ID, we're gonna use this drone tag mini here. We're going to go up here to add device. We're going to say yes. We're adding this guy as a device, not adding this onto our other devices. We're going to select that it's a broadcast module. It's drone tag mini. Drone tag. And then we're going to enter that remote ID serial number, which is on the back right there. There it is. And add device. All right. So now that's registered this remote ID module to us. So if we were to fly under recreational rules, we could then go fly our flight test arrow with this guy. And then when we're done, we could fly our Inspire 1 with this guy or an FPV drone with this guy. And it would just allow us to take this off of whatever drone we want and put it onto whatever other drone that isn't already Remote ID compliant. For the Mini 3 Pro, if you need to edit. You're gonna go to these three little dots, click edit. It does transmit Remote ID information. Transmit standard remote ID, meaning it's built in. And then we're just going to type in that serial number there. Once we've got that serial number typed in, click update device. And you'll see that we have a couple different device types here now. We've got a broadcast module. We've got a home built UAS. So the broadcast module is going to go on that home built UAS. And then we've got a drone with standard remote ID. Now you're not going to be able to change the standard remote ID because remember it's built into the drone. So this is going to apply for those drones you have that don't come with or already have remote ID. Where are you gonna check? Right here. You're gonna go to this page, it's uasdoc.faa.gov. And we're gonna look for whatever drone we want. Let's look for the Mini 3. You can see the Mini 3 Pro and the DJI Mini 3, so the Pro model and the non-Pro model, both are accepted. If it's accepted here, you're good. You don't need one of these. You don't need to go spend the extra two or $300. Just fly like normal. Make sure you have that added and you're all set. For part 107, it's just a little bit different. You can see here, we're in our part 107 dashboard. We've got a test up top and I've got a bunch of drones here. So we're gonna go to one of the ones first that doesn't have any remote ID. And we're gonna once again, add this guy. First up, we are going to look at, let's look at our Johnny frame, a five inch FPV drone. Three dots, I'm gonna click edit. Same deal here. You're gonna take this guy's information, which is on the module. You are going to select, yes, it has remote ID. And you're gonna type in that serial number. I'm not gonna do that here because once you save it, you can only change it again for 14 days. After that 14 days, you're gonna to have to repay that $5 to re-register this drone. So again, I'm not going to type in this number because we don't wanna pay that extra $5 to re-register this drone. We haven't allocated where these modules are going to go in our fleet just yet. So I'm going to hold off on that. But once you added this number, you would go ahead and click save and it would change just like the recreational dashboard. And for the, let's find our Mavic 2 Pro here. It's going to be the same process. I'm going to go to edit, traditional UAS. You're going to select yes. And you're going to tell it it has standard remote ID instead of broadcast because it's going to be built in and updated via firmware. Your serial number here is gonna change from whatever the serial number used to be to the 15 or 20 digit serial number that's required by the uh, ASTM standard for remote ID. Once you do this and you save it, again, not gonna do that for this guy. Once you save it, it's gonna update just like the recreational dashboard. And you'll be able to see here that we have standard remote ID on a bunch of these drones. Hope this answered your questions on re-registering drones to include remote ID info. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comments. We'll see you in the next one.